So today I want to talk about this verse in the Bible that uh, Paul was writing to Timothy. Uh, he was a young preacher, young pastor. And so the topic for today is called Set an Example. Okay. So most of us like to look towards other people and how they do it and do it ourselves. And so the Bible gives us some uh, suggestions on how we should do it, things in life. So 1 Timothy 4.12, Paul writes to, to Timothy. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for believers in speech, in life, in love, faith, and purity. So we'll go through each one individually here. So let no one look down on you because you are young. Okay, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure how young he was, but I want to give you guys a quick example of David. Everybody knows David, right? So the example I want to give you guys is when... His brother yelled at him because he came. Remember when he brought them some food? And it was a Goliath. And he's like, hey, what's going on here? He's like, hey, go home. Go you know, tend the sheep. And so same day, King Saul doubted David's ability because he was young. Remember, he's like, hey, man, you're you only a boy. And he's a big uh, soldier. What are you going to do? And then later on, same day, Goliath scorned, ridiculed, and mocked David. And then this was all in the same day, right? And so David, he withstood all the criticism and he gave glory to God at the end. So how should we handle things in life? The Bible says we have to set an example in these five, uh, five things in life. So number one is, it says, set an example in speech, right? So he begins telling Timothy, set an example in speech or words or the way we talk, right? So it's not surprising because speech is really, really, really important. And uh, Proverbs, it says, death and life is in the power of tongue, okay? It's, it's that big of a deal that we need to know about it. In Matthew um, 12, 34, Jesus warned. He said, for the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart so what's in your heart you you know express yourself through through talking the good man um, out of his good uh, treasure brings forth what is good and the evil man out of his evil treasure brings forth what is evil and they say to you that every careless word that man shall speak they shall render account for it in the day of judgment. So everything that you say, every careless word, you have to give an account for it. By your words, you shall be justified, and by your words, you shall be condemned. Wow. It's a really important for, uh, for us to know. So a man's speech reflects what's on your heart. You know, you don't just, uh, or I guess what's on your heart, it's not really on your heart, it's what's in your, on your mind. It's just common sense to say what's on your heart. So you just speak. If it's something good, you say. If you're mad, you say. You know, if it's if it's uh, whatever's inside, that's where you express yourself. So um, in Ephesians four, it says, "Therefore, lay aside falsehood, speak the truth, each of you, with your neighbor." Because the Bible says we have to speak the truth, not just not saying the bad words, but also speak the truth because. Uh, and uh, also, the uh, Bible says, God, he cannot lie. And he says, be holy because I'm holy and be like me. So if he doesn't lie, that we shouldn't either. And Ephesians 4.26 says, when you talk, do not say harmful things. But say what people need, words that will help others become stronger. And then what you say will do good to those who listen to you, right? So people are always listening what you have to say, and if it's good, then it's going to uh, help them become stronger. Amen? So number two, it says set an example in behavior or life or conduct. So it's different translation, but we can just go with like just general in life, right? So second, uh, 
uh, it says, uh, Timothy had to set exam an example in life. So, disciple of Christ is required to not just speak the, you know, topics, you, you know the Bible, but also you have to show it in real life, you know. Like when you're at the school, when you're at the store, when you're in the parking lot, when you are at work, when you're at college. It's not just you're, you're talking and because uh, people have to see that. Uh, I want to give you guys an example about if somebody, you know, saying something and totally says the opposite or different. And, you know, how... how some people just say, "Okay, this is how you should live." Remember, remember Pharisees in in in, in uh, when Jesus was living, they were saying, "Okay, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this," and then Jesus said, "Well, you have to follow the law, but don't don't do what they do. Their actions, you know, they're different." So I want to give you guys a quick example here. Uh, so let's kind of. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys what to do. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll uh, show you guys. We'll go ahead and uh, take you one of your arms and then we're going to like put it on your head. Okay? So we'll do it all together. So put your pen down. Everybody's ready? No, hold on. P put your hand down. So I'll say one, two, three, and we'll do it together. Okay? So we just want to see it. So everybody's ready? Yes? Okay, let, let me see your hands. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll do this, right? Ilya, you're not ready. <laughs> Okay, so we'll do it together. Ready? So we'll we'll do put put it on top, just you know, as an example. One, two, three, go. All right. <laughs> I saw some, I saw some people doing it different. Okay, so good job. So so what people do is like they they tell you you got to do it this way, but do the, you know totally opposite. So some of you guys have to have to follow me and grab the ear instead of doing this. So you see what other people are doing, and you, unconsciously you're trying to do imitate what they're doing, even though they tell you, okay, this is what you got to do, and this, you know you do the opposite, even though like, because they told you it's not the way to 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 do it. So, anyways, in James it says, "Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by good behavior in deeds and gentleness of wisdom." And then Peter says, "Like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves." also in your behavior or in your life or in, in conduct. So 1 Peter 2.12, the Bible says, people who do not believe are living all, uh, all around you and might say you are doing wrong. Live such good lives that you will see, they will see the good things you do and will give glory to God when the, on the day when Christ comes again. So I want to give you guys a quick uh, illustration here. There's a story, uh, uh, you know how it's, it was like a big uh, amphitheater or theater or something. And anyways, th this guy, th they're on the Passover, they're having a play. They, they did it like two, Friday I think and Saturday. And so they're on the stage and they're making, you know, how Jesus died and how he rose and everything. And so the, the, dr the play is going on on the stage and then there's a whole bunch of people saying, uh, sitting, watching it. And then this one guy sitting up front, and the, the, the scene on the stage is going on, how Jesus is carrying his cross, and this, this, this actor is playing, and they're having all the actors, and they're making this uh, play. And so this one guy starts yelling all this bad stuff and as, as, as the actor who plays Jesus is carrying the cross, and they're trying, you know, trying to do the scene there. And so he, he's yelling all this stuff at the guy, and he's just walking there, you know, because it's a, it's a play, you know. Everybody's watching. You get they got the lights, the music, and everything. And so, this guy continues yelling at him, a little, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jesus. And this is you know, the, the, everybody's watching. Jesus drops his cross, gets down the floor, and starts beating the guy down. Okay. And then so they, they broke them apart. And then director says, "Hey, Jesus, well, you you uh, throw something like this, pull 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 a stunt like this again, you're fired." Okay. Like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know. I didn't mean to do it, but hey, the, the, the guy was too annoying, so I had to stop him. So, anyway, so they finished the play, and then the next day, check this out. The next day, they're doing it again. It was like a two-day show. So the next day, the same thing repeats. G Jesus, the actor, is walking with the cross and all that stuff, and then the same guy sitting there again starts yelling stuff again. 
So he's, you know, doesn't tr try not to pay attention. He's all doing this stuff. And then the guy still continues to yell at him and is calling his name and stuff. So the guy's like, okay, I don't want to get fired. So he's like, hey, man, I'll deal with you after the resurrection, okay? <laughs> all right, so sweet. Okay. So, you know, the, re the resurrection might, might never come for the guy because he was fired. So that wasn't the resurrection. So we as a Christian, you know, this guy is playing Jesus. And he's like trying to show to all these people who are sitting there, you know, they're probably not, most of them were not Christian. Uh, they're watching how you're acting in life. So you can, you know, say, hey, I'm Christian, you know, or I'm Jesus. But how you do things in life, how you react to things is totally different. So that's why Paul says, hey, you got to set, set an example in behavior and how you do things or just in general in life. Okay, so um, how we treat each other and what we do, how we re to react to things. And uh, number three, it says, set an example in love. Ooh. And it's not really probably the love that everybody, our, cart uh, our culture uh, thinks calls love. It involves uh, more uh, things like self-sacrifice and uh, service on behalf to help others. So God, uh, in the Bible it says you have to love God and the number two is what? Love your neighbor, right? So in John 15, 13, the Lord says, Greater love has no one than this, that one lays down his life for his friends. So this verse kind of sums up the whole idea of uh, self-sacrifice and then the love. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know you are my disciples. By what will people know that we are his disciples? Okay. If you love one another. So First John 3.16 says, this is how we know that love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need and has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with just our words, but with our actions and in truth. Uh, there was uh, a story uh, in uh, Asia where there were two twin brothers. And one guy was Christian and the other, one, the other guy was alcohol, uh, alcoholic. So they, they lived together in the same house. So uh, one night, this bad guy, the, the, the non-Christian brother, he uh, had some, was at the bar or something, and then there was a fight, and then he pulled out his knife and killed this guy, right? So he has all this blood on him, and he starts running home. So he ran home. People knew where he lived. So they called the police, and then the police, uh, you know, took him a little while, but they showed up at the guy's house, right? And so this guy run, runs into the house, and then his, his other brother, they, they look the same. He's like, hey, man, I just killed a guy. I don't know what I do. What do I do? And then the, the Christian guy, he's like, okay, I know what to do. Take, give me your shirt, and I give you my shirt. So they exchanged. So this guy had all the blood on him and stuff. So they exchanged the shirts. So the police shows up. They see the guy with the blood and stuff. And so they take this guy. And they took the Christian guy and not the bad guy who actually did it. And so they took him to jail and all that. And then they, by by their loss, they had to kill the, the guy because he killed the other person. So the bad guy, not, not, not Christian guy, he writes to his brother in jail. And he says, well, you know, all the preaching, all the preaching that you did all these years, it never touched my heart. But from this moment on, I give my life to Jesus and then this example, you know, what you did to save my life, from now on, for the rest of my life, I give my life to Jesus. And so the, guy, the other guy died. And this guy became Christian, and he, I think he became a pastor. But anyways, so this is, this is you know, Jesus tells us this is, this is how you should, this is the example of love. 
Number four, it says set an example in faith. So Paul says set an example in faith. You know, probably one of the greatest lies the church tells to, um, to the people, it says, oh, the kids or the youth, the youth is our, the youth, uh, they're our future, right? Have you heard an expression like that? They're our future. Kids are our future. Teenagers are our future. Well, hello, what's, what's present? I think, I think the, the, the youth and the kids are the present, not just the future. Yes, they're a future, but they're present as well. So uh, that means the, the, the faith that we have, the faith in God, the faith, you know, that we, we, we know the commandments, the faith that this is how we sh should live. We should have it now, not, hey, when you grow up, when you're, you know, 20, 30, then you can express your faith. Then you can start be a missionary. You can be a, a preacher. No, it says set an example in faith. So uh, you guys uh, all know that, uh, you know, I want to give you guys an example. Daniel in Babylon, right? Here there's Daniel and there three of his friends. They're taken to captivity. No parents, no friends, no church. There was like, what, four of them? This big, they're a big city. They're in different land. They're a foreign land. And here they are. And they can choose to follow the Bible, what God told them to do. Or they can just go on, hey, we're in a different land. We don't care. We're young. Nobody sees us. Who cares? The king tells us what to do. Hey, we're slaves. Might as well do it, right? Is that what happened? I don't think they were like big preachers at that time or I'm not sure how old they were, but they did not, they kept their faith. Just, just keep it nice and simple, right? And then the other example is when they, uh, when they put a big statue, right? And then the king tells everybody to bow down. And the three friends, they didn't do it. Why? Because they had faith. They, the faith was so strong, they said, we are willing to go there. And we know that our God is mighty to save us. So their faith was that strong. So I just want to encourage you guys to have the same faith. And even though you're young or teenager, still have that. Make sure um, you take it all the way. Because uh, some translation says faith or the other translation says faithfulness. So how faithful are you to your family, how faithful are you to church, to God? And I've seen a lot of people being faithful in the beginning, right? And then later on, when the time goes by, the love for God kind of grows weary. They're kind of, the daily, ta daily tasks, uh, daily chores in, in life just kind of swamps you and you're just done. You just do it not without great love, but just, because you have to, you know, just uh, you just get used to doing it. So keep the faith. I already spoke in, in, in details uh, in, in back in the days about this. Take it all the way to the end. Not just, you know, I, I um, got, got baptized with the Holy Spirit or in the water. And then, you know, I got four, five, ten years. And then, hey, I'll just do it. No, take it all the way to the end. So because Second Timothy 4, 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. You know, Paul had to go through a lot of stuff in life. Being beaten, being, you know, drowned in, in, in the sea. Uh, they, they stoned him a few times. And then he said he kept the faith. I mean, here's the man of God. He's trying to do all this stuff for the Lord. And then it's always, hey, he's always in trouble, you know. People are beating him up. Things are happening. But he kept the faith all the way till he died. And most of the people back in the days, they didn't die just like, you know, hey, I'm 85 years old. I lay in my bed and just die. They killed them. Like either tortured them or, you know, cut them in half or stuff like that. So they took the, the faith. So it says keep the faith all the way. So we have to set an example in faith like Daniel did or his three friends. And uh, like Paul says, take it all the way to the end. Number five. You guys are all tired now, I see, right? Number five. Set an example in purity. P 
P-U-R-I-T-Y. Purity. So finally, number five says settings up with purity. Uh, primarily, this refers to area of the opposite gender, right? Both in actions and their intentions of our heart and also thoughts and mind. How do you behave with the opposite gender? And for the girl and the boys, you know, sometimes they like to dress, dress up, look nice. And for the guys, you can't blame the girls the way they dress. And guys and the girls, we all must have a uh, guard on our eyes and our minds to be an example in purity. So uh, that's number five. And the last example is, as you guys can know, any, any, any examples from the Bible? Who can think of one? Okay, looks like, looks like we got some Russian speaking out there. Okay, Joseph, right? Everybody knows this story. He's young. He's, I think it was a teenager at that time. And we all uh, uh, read the Genesis and everything, how it happened to uh, him from the time when he was uh, a teenager, when the father gave him a, a, a beautiful coat. And so he kept the faith, and he came out pure, and then God made him a second in the whole nation. All right? So Paul says, set an example in purity. Second um, Timothy, later on it says, Second Timothy 2.22 says, as Paul writes, uh, all Christians should flee youthful lusts and instead pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. So as the group comes up here, I want to do a quick recap. So Paul tells Timothy, set an example in... Number one, in speech, the way we talk is really important. Number two, in life, just in general, you know. Remember the story about, hey, I'll see you at the re uh, after resurrection? That's the actions, how you act in life. Number three, in love. You know, it's probably a little bit different than we think of love, the term an example was the two brothers. And then the faith, right? Number four, faith. Remember Daniel and his three friends, how they kept the faith. And Paul took it all the way to the end. And number five, purity. So those, if you do all that stuff, you should be set, okay? So let's get up on our feet and start praying.